That's right, Janice McCommon told me he's focused on fixing the problems at the bank as he announced a half-year cash profit of nearly $4.7 billion, slightly below expectations. It was a messy result given a restructure which includes some accounting changes and the spinning off of its wealth management and mortgage businesses. Shareholders will receive an unchanged $2 per share dividend, but it's his response to the Royal Commission that's gained attention. Commonwealth Bank CEO Matt Common took over from Ian Arev in April. What kind of responsibility do you take for the bank's wrongdoings? Well, I've been a senior executive inside the bank uh, for some time. I ran the retail bank for more than five years. And so I certainly accept a share of the responsibility and accountability for the issues and the failures of the Commonwealth Bank. As for if he's the right person for the job... Well, ultimately, that's a, that's a decision for the board. I'm completely focused on ensuring that we not only fix those issues and failures, but also that we make sure they don't reoccur. Still, the Hain Royal Commission referred 24 cases of misconduct to the regulators across a number of financial institutions for consideration. Well, we don't have any uh, insights on that. Bank Reflecting Governor. on the banking and financial services industries, Reserve Bank Governor Philip Lowe blamed the culture of internal remuneration and years of massive profits, leading to a sense of hubris for its woes. They focused on selling product, rather than delivering services and I think they understand that now and uh, the Royal Commission's recommendations I think are sensible. We published a report earlier today where we have an independent expert which reports on our progress. We think that's really important to be very transparent. It's not just the Royal Commission which the entire banking sector has to deal with but a slowdown in credit growth which may impact future earnings. The cyclical slowdown in the Australian property market is a, is a real major risk for the financial system uh, and for, for the bank's bottom lines. What we are seeing looks to be a manageable adjustment in the housing markets in Sydney and Melbourne. But there are risks, enough to warrant a downgrade to the RBA's economic growth forecasts to about 3% over this year and two and three quarters of a percent for 2020. While it's calling that growth reasonable, the board may have to take action if house price declines detrimentally impacts consumer consumption. Over the past year, the next move is up scenarios were more likely than the next move is down scenarios. Today, the probabilities appear to be more evenly balanced. For rates to be cut, there would need to be a sustained rise in the unemployment rate, along with easing inflation.